Okie dokes. I am live. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or evening, or whatever it is, wherever you are, wherever from you are watching, wherever from. That's good English. That's a good start. Uh, welcome to Resilience Live. I'll just do a little introduction and uh, we'll give it a bit of time for people to join. Um, so, Resilience Live is something that I do once a week. Uh, for about 30 minutes. I say about because I tend to ramble, um, but I try and stick to 30 minutes at 11 a.m. Um, in the UK time. Uh, so 11 a.m. to 11.30, I talk about uh, resilience, well-being, your well-being, your performance, your happiness, your joys uh, in life, in work. And uh, I talk about a lot of different things because there's so many dimensions to us, our consciousness, our health, our wellness, um, and uh, I go live on various platforms. So right now I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram, uh, which is why, if you notice, I'm looking here and there because I have a LinkedIn there ahead of me and Instagram down there. And I'm also on Facebook and YouTube. So you can watch me wherever you like. And um, on each of those platforms, the live stream stays up. Um, so if you can't watch me live, that's not a problem. You can join me later and watch later on. Um, I'm not using my headset. So if you are watching on the la on on this screen, if, you, if you're looking at me directly here, wherever you're watching on, uh, do let me know if the sound is okay, because usually I use the headsets a little bit better, um, but it doesn't work with my hair right now, so <laughs> priorities, although I don't like my hair, I'm going out after this and I put my hair up and I'm like, I'm not sure I like it, maybe you can let me know, uh, but let's kick off, so today my topic was all about understanding that the mind and the body are one. We are one system. Mind and body are not separate. And often when we're suffering mentally or we're suffering physically, we separate the two. And we say, right, my mind's not right, so I've got to do the work on my mind and my mind, I've got to do my thoughts, I've got to do my processing, I've got to go to my trauma, I've got to do all of that stuff. I've got to get like my optimism, I've got to get my perspective shifted and all this stuff. Um, and often when we're not feeling good physically, we're like, oh, I've got to take some medicines, I've got to, you know, do something with my body, maybe do some physical health things and all that sort of stuff. Um, and this is all good, um, but it's not always seeing the whole picture. Hello, Saliha. I'm very well, thank you, darling. How are you? Uh, can you let me know, lovely, is your LinkedIn, if you can hear me okay, because I'm not using my headset today. Um, and I'm not sure if the sound on my laptop is as good. So if necessary, I will put it on. Um, but I was just talking, Sina, about you know the importance of understanding that mind and body are one system. Um, and very many physical issues, physical ailments, illnesses, pains, and so on, that you have are very likely, not in all scenarios, I'm not a doctor, always, seek medical advice, I should say that before each of my sessions here, is that I'm not clinically trained. If you're really suffering mentally, emotionally, physically, please go and see clinically trained practitioners. That's not what this is about. Um, this is about my uh, me sharing my thoughts. This is education only. Um, thank you, Saliha, you can hear me. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, so yeah, so what I've realized and what, what a lot of teachings out there are now showing us, maybe not necessarily in the mainstream, uh, is that a lot of our physical ailments are rooted in our psychology. We call this psychosomatic. So psycho is the mind, soma is the body. And a lot of physical issues and illnesses are psychosomatic. They're rooted in our psychology, not in our body. And often what we do when we have the physical issues, the headaches, the pains, we're frequently getting colds, we've got stomach issues, digestive issues. Um, I'll talk a bit more about those because they're very much related to psychological distress. Um, and what we do is we try and tackle it in the body. We say, well, I've got to fix my body. And maybe we can get a little bit of respite. Maybe we can get a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of healing for a moment. But because we haven't realized that the root cause of your physical issue is in your mind and you haven't tackled that, it's going to come back and it's going to keep going. And similarly, it can happen the other way around. So a lot of physical issues are created by your mind and your mental state 
and your emotional state, but a lot of mental issues and your emotions are also affected by the state of your physical health. It's one system. This is all working together. You cannot separate it. And that's something that I think we really need to start to understand. As I say, many people know this. If you're in the field of work that I'm in, if you listen to the types of teachers and, and leading edge thought that's going on and research, but in mainstream, we need to understand this because we're all human and we are all a multi-dimensional system. And the thing is, I teach this in my training, is that it's actually very obvious when you look at your biology and your physiology. Because one of the things I do in my training is I do a little quiz and I ask people about, you know, where's the brain? You know, how many brains do you have? Uh, if you ever come on my training, I'm kind of giving you the answers to the quiz. But, um, but basically people say, oh, I've got this brain in my head. But let me just uh, explain something to you. So yes, you have a brain in your head and your brain in your head has your neurons, which is all your information cells and it's very powerful. But the brain in your head is connected to your spine. Your spine goes all the way down and along your spine is neurons, more information cells coming from the brain, connected, communicating, and then they go out through your entire body to the tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes. So your brain is in your entire body. So whatever's going on up there is heading into every little fiber of your being and having an effect. And we know this because when you're stressed, you get anxiety, you get anger, you get fear, you feel it in your body. Emotions are a bodily experience, not a mental experience. So your body is really, really important. Hello, Kirat. How are you, my darling? I hope you're well today. Thank you for coming and joining me. Um, so, yeah, so, so the other thing as well, as I'm saying, the head brain is in the body and is transmitting into the body. So whatever's going on up here is going into every fiber of your being via your what we call the peripheral nervous system. Um, but it also happens the other way around. So you have uh, a gut, uh, and we have what we call the second brain in the gut. It's a gut brain. Um, and so there's lots of neurons in your gut brain, lots of information cells in your gut area. And it's also connected to your head brain. It's sending information. You know, we say, oh, I've got a gut feeling. What is that? It's information processing. It's a brain. It's talking to you. And it's sending information to your head. And your hormones, your happy hormones and things are also produced in your gut. This is why I say food is mood. So it's all one big system. Uh, we have here LinkedIn user. Good morning. Sorry, I'm a bit late. I'm going to guess that who uh, I don't see your name, my sweet soul. Um, 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 tell me your name, please. And then I'll know who you are. But don't worry about being late. I'm late sometimes. It's all good. Um, but essentially, you know, this is what, what we've got to understand, that, that everything is connected. Um, lots of physical illnesses come from psychological stress. Because when you're stressed, let me talk to you about what happens when you're in psychological stress. And by the way, a lot of people spend every day in psychological stress, but they don't realize it because it becomes normal. So they're constantly anxious every day. They're like, oh, I'm anxious, something's not right. Or they get really sad and depressed and it becomes their norm. Very, very unhealthy for your physical body. So when you go into what we call the fight or flight, when you're stressed out, something's triggered you, you're stressed out. What your body does is a number of things and it puts stress hormones through your body and they increase your heart rate and they stop pumping blood really hard around your body. Um, and they also shut off your immune system and shut off your digestive system. Two very important systems that you need to be healthy. And it, it's okay if you just experience it for a short period, which is what's supposed to happen when you go into a stress state. You're supposed to be like, ah, oh, stress, body's ready to fight or flight. You deal with it, you chill. But because of the world we live in, we're constantly bombarded with threats and triggers and worries and complexity. The economy, the news, the COVID, the wars, the relationship issues, the job, the money, the finances, the relationships, the social media, bang, bang, bang. And we're constantly getting triggered into stress. So we stay in a state of fight or flight, which means your immune system and your digestive systems are always shut down. And then you wonder why a lot of people who get uh, colds very frequently. I notice this, there are people um, who are very, very stressed all the time and they're always getting sick because your immune system is not functioning. 
And a lot of people who have a lot of stress uh, also get digestive issues, stomach ulcers, irritable bowel syndrome, dodgy stomach, all that, because these systems are not functioning in stability and balance when you're constantly stressed. And if this goes on for a long time, you get heart disease, you get strokes, all these things. And there's research that shows this now. We know this is true. Stress is the number one cause of so many physical illnesses. Um, Umesh is LinkedIn user. I don't know why your name isn't showing either, darling. It ha does happen sometimes on LinkedIn, but thank you for telling me. So Leah says that I could understand that the physical health could affect your mental health, but somehow not the other way around. That a good mental health could help a better physical health. Absolutely. Um, and that's what I've just been explaining. Mind and body are one, Saliha. Your brain is in your body through your neural networks. When you have negative stress in your brain, it triggers hormones into your body, cortisol, adrenaline, that mess the system up and go, and you're living like that. And it's disrupting everything. Everything is out of harmony. Everything is out of balance. But also, like you say, physical health is mental health. When you don't get enough sleep, what happens? Oh, you can't think straight. Your brain isn't working very well. Your, when you sleep, when you exercise, your brain, your body, sorry, breaks down the stress hormones. So if you've had a stressful day, uh, okay, cool. Did you get a good rest at night? A good, solid, high quality sleep? Because if you didn't, you're going to wake up with stress hormones still going around your body. And then you're going to pile on more. And then just like, uh, so, so it's all one thing that's going on. So mental affects physical and physical affects mental because the physical body that's not rested. I've still got the hormones in my body. Now my brain can't work. Maha, Moha, Moha says you rock. Thank you, my lovely soul. How sweet is that? You rock too. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so, so look, I, I'll give you an example of this that happened recently. And the reason I'm talking about this, by the way, is because if you don't understand this, you may take the wrong approach to helping yourself and then you won't get to the root cause and the problem will continue. So for example, people who have uh, irritable bowel syndrome and lots of digestive issues, stomach ulcers, for example, they will take all the medications and I'm not saying don't do that, go get your treatment, what you need. But they don't understand that the root of it is in their psyche. It's in their mental state that's flooding the stress into the system, which is causing the disruption here, which is causing sickness. And so they put the medication here, but they're not doing the work here. So the root cause is going to continue to perpetuate your physical illness. So you're doing, you need to do, maybe you need to do both. I'm not saying just do one or the other. Maybe you need to do both. Take some medication to help yourself. But you want to figure out what it is up here that is sending disruption energy into your body that is causing things to go out of whack and get sick. And the thing I will say to you as well, my lovely souls, is that when the body gets sick, that's your last uh, slap in the face message. What happens first, when you're mentally not right, is you'll, you'll notice it with your thinking. And then you'll feel it as well in your body. You get the emotions and you get the little whispers and it's like, oh, something ain't right. But you ignore it. And then later down the road, the physical body gets sick. That's the last point. So you have an opportunity, become self-aware. Mind is not right. I'm stressed. I'm being very negative. I'm ruminating on things. I'm, I'm whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling blah, 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 blah every day. And then the body's going to get sick. So you have time to rectify it before you then get the physical illness, which is now just going to make it worse because now you're like, oh God, I'm sick as well. So we need to understand um, that it's a process. So uh, Salihia says, I kind of believe it was two different entities somehow, mind and body. One system, my love, one system, no separation. We are multidimensional. Everything is connected. Um, exercise is the best release, says Kirat. Yes. Um, Kirat, I had a thing a little while ago, um, which uh, I, I woke up every day and I was just feeling really miserable. And I was really like, oh, I'm stressed. Oh, no, I'm not stressed. I wasn't happy. I was anxious. I was like, oh, life is miserable. I'm miserable. Why do I feel like this? And I thought to myself, right, it's my mind. I've got to get my mind right. I've got to think, think, 
think differently, focus. I've got to process the emotion. I've got to change my environment. I was getting so stressed trying to solve it up here. And then something hit me. When was the last time you had a good sleep? When was the last time you didn't stay up till two o'clock in the morning, scrolling through junk on your phone and then wake up tired because you'd be looking at that light in the dark. It's all bad for you, right? And you didn't sleep. And so one day I got the will and I said, right, put the phone down, go to bed early, get a nice solid rest. And I woke up the next day, everything was rosy. I'm so happy again. I felt great because my body was the answer, not the mind. I didn't need to fix my thinking. I needed to get a good sleep. And that resets everything, calms it all down. So you have to know at any given point, what is it? Where is it? What is it? Is it a physical thing that I need to do? Do I need to exercise? Do I need to eat better? Because food is mood. Do I need to get a good rest? Do I need to dance? Do I need to do something with my body? Do I need to release the trauma from my body? Body keeps the score. Your stress you feel in your adult life, your anxieties, your fears, whatever, you think it's because of now. It's not. Your body, your cells are holding those memories from your childhood, from whatever conditioning you had, and they are just triggering it, triggering it in your adult life. The body is holding the memory. So body work, yoga, releasing, relaxing, oh, all of that. <sighs> Retrain the body to stop reacting in the way that it does with stress and anxiety. Um, oh, so many comments. I love you. I love you. Let me try and see these. Uh, when I was really tired, Salia says, my physician did a blood analysis and concluded all is fine in my body is so he could not help. Yeah. So, so maybe it's not that deeper problem, Saliha. Often it's so obvious. It's the simple things, rest, sleep, food, water, I don't drink enough water. Let's all drink some water together right now, everybody. We've got to drink water. Maybe it's things like that that are actually what's needed. It's not a deeper rooted issue. Are we just taking care of the basics, which we forget in our modern world where we're so busy and there's so much to think about. Uh, maybe it's that, but also tiredness can come from the psychological state. Um, I, and I don't know, Sli, I'm not there with you right now. I mean, I could tune in a little bit, but but often, you know, the sense I get, I don't know for sure, Salia, but but, you know, there's something around the the sort of the overthinking can tire you out, right? Because you're thinking about too many things, you're trying to do too many things, and maybe we need to like release some of that. So sometimes it's a mental thing. Uh, Umesh says, does mental health affect physical health and vice versa? My love, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm saying. The answer is yes, absolutely. As I was saying earlier, when I didn't get enough sleep, so my physical health was not good, I felt bad mentally. I felt irritable. I felt anxious. I felt miserable. And the other way around, when I don't feel good mentally, my body then shows me that. So for me, when I'm stressed and not good mentally, um, if it's really bad, I get I get really bad skin. My body, my face will start erupting in mountains, which have like their own postcodes. They're so huge. My spots are like, ah, it's like, nice. So, so then that stresses me out more. because like now I've got to deal with this as well. <laughs> Uh, I get um, I, I get heart palpitations. Uh, I have trouble falling asleep, just like you. Uh, I was going to say Linton user, Omesh. Um, my menstrual cycle for women, when we are really distressed for a long period, your menstrual cycle, particularly if it's normally regular, will mess up. And that's a sign. Your body is telling you it is in disharmony, dis-ease, disease, dis-ease, right? If you are not in ease, you get disease, okay? So we've got to understand. Uh, Umesh has trouble falling asleep until 1, 2 a.m. My love, I know I have this challenge sometimes as well. Um, I'm not a sleep expert. What I will say to you is I keep seeing little clips online from, um, you may know Stephen Bartlett. He does amazing podcasts. And he had an episode with a sleep expert on it. And I didn't watch the whole thing, but I've seen little, little tidbits of clips. So maybe go and watch that, Amesh, because um, his guests are amazing. Like I love a lot of the stuff that he's done. A lot of his guests are so good. So maybe that will help you to see how do you deal with that? If you've got trouble with sleep, how do you get back into um, a more healthy rhythm of sleep? Um, and also, again, you know, 
what is it about the sleep? Because the other thing as well, right? When you try and force yourself to sleep, when you can't sleep, it just makes it worse. I don't know the answers right now, um, Umesh, but maybe go and have a look at that podcast, Stephen Bartlett, about sleep. Um, the guest on there was an expert. Um, and, you know, what I'm doing here today, I'm giving you a little tidbit, not because I'm an expert in all these things. I'm not a sleep expert. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a therapist. But I, I this is how I've navigated my life is learning bits. And then when something feels true for me, I go and learn more from other experts. And then I apply and I also follow Number one, my own intuition. You are your own guru. Get in tune with yourself. Get in tune with your higher self, your wisdom, your knowing. What's going on in me right now? What do I need for my health right now? But go and research and find more as well if you want on any particular areas that you think you might be struggling with. Um, Saliha says, I totally agree with you. I've had a headache for two days, two days ago and was really tired and I drank water and I felt better. Exactly. That's my first point of call. When I got a headache, I go, wow, how much of this have I been drinking? Because it's dehydration. It's so simple. Mm. And we overcomplicate. It must be more than that. It must be something big and bad. And just the basics. Ah, Mesh says, thank you. You're welcome. You're very, very welcome. So, yeah, so we've got to understand um, that, that it's one system. And sometimes when you're physically not well, you might think it's mental, but actually maybe you need to do, and it may be, but, but sometimes the solution is a physical action with your physical body. And on the other side, sometimes you're like, I've got to work it out of my head because I'm so stressed and I don't feel good in my head. But actually, maybe it's your, I just said the same thing twice. If your body is not well, sorry, if your body is not well, chances are it's rooted up here. Um, and a lot of people don't really know what's going on up here. But as I say, it's all connected. Your brain is in your body. The ne neurons in your brain, down the spine, all through your body. When you're stressed, when you're anxious, hormones going through your body that are disrupting your system. It's called the fight or flight uh, reaction that you have when you're stressed and triggered into fight or flight. It's meant to be temporary, but most of us live with it all day, every day. And that's when it becomes um, a very big problem that causes a lot of diseases later on and short-term illnesses as well. A heart from James, and I send a heart back to you, my love. Thank you for joining. Um, caffeine as well, Kira says, I love that you've said that. I, I, I drink tea. I mean, I've got to have my tea. I might die if I don't have my tea. Okay, a bit extreme, but I like tea, and I know tea does have caffeine in it. Um, but I don't really drink coffee. But what I've noticed is that the times where I would have a coffee, I get the heart palpitations, I feel anxious. Uh, and then I say, oh, it must be my brain. I must be thinking negatively. Maybe something is wrong. No, it's because you shouldn't have had the coffee. So again, physical affects mental. And you must become self-aware. Maybe coffee doesn't affect you like that. That's okay. But what is it when you eat something how does it make you feel? Does it make you lethargic? You have a coffee, it gives you anxiety. Mm, probably not so good. Alcohol gives us anxiety. Probably not so good. And so you think if you, if you misinterpret the wisdom of your body and your being when you're feeling these things, you misinterpret it and think the root cause is in my head because it's anxiety. It's not. It's because of what you put in your body. And similarly again, you think all oh, the issues in my body because I put something in my body. Maybe it's psychologically rooted is what you're thinking and so on. Trauma from the past, all these things. Um, Celia says, I was in a miserable situation and I got divorced and now I feel so happy and relaxed and healthy mentally and physically and emotionally. So personal situation also affects both health, mental and physical. Yes! You need to come on my training sometime, darling. So what I teach, right? Let me just draw it out for you. So do it very quickly. Don't know how well this is going to show. I think it's reversed. Probably. We'll try it anyway. So this is my resilience well-being model that I teach. And it's multidimensional because of exactly what you just said there, Celia, which is absolutely on point. So you've got mind, these two emotions. So what you think creates how you feel. Sorry, LinkedIn people, if you can see it there. Your emotions drive your behavior and your body. 
You know, it's not logic. It's not, oh, I think something, no, no, do it logically. No, no, no. Emotions are driving everything you do. And they also affect your body. So the emotions of anxiety and so on, so on, it's going to affect how you feel. Or the emotions of happiness, your body's going to feel lighter and free. Then that gives you a result in the external environment. And the external environment is then also affecting your mind, affecting your emotions and your body. And you go round, 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 round. And if you have patterns, you're stuck in a certain state, which is why people just keep repeating their life experiences and wonder why nothing changes, because you're stuck in a pattern, which you learned when you were young. But then in the center, you have what I love. This is where I feel that my, my you know, I'm not a nutritionist or whatever, but I, I'm, I'm a soulist. I'm, I'm, when it comes to the soul and the spirit, I got you, man. That's the silver bullet. When you are in alignment with your truth, your heart, your soul, your pure consciousness, your true energy, connection through all time and space that affects when you live from there that affects your mind your emotions your body your behavior and your environment it's like a silver bullet in the middle that energizes everything so this around you is the physical vehicle the human vehicle the mind the emotion the psyche so on and in the center is your soul and ideally we want to live from that which then creates everything around it but what we do is we disconnect from our soul when we're young for many reasons which i've probably don't have time to go through today but one day maybe we will um, and then we continue to live disconnected from our authentic truth and nature and we're just trying to get by in this human vehicle of mind emotions body behavior environment mind emotion body behavior, and doesn't have the silver bullet so we never quite become whole Wholeness is all of this working together powerfully. Look at this beautiful scribble. Like, what? Oh, yeah, this is me. Um, <laughs> it means something. I hope it means something to you. But basically, wholeness is integration of all of that. Soul leads, instructs the mind, which takes the emotions, the behavior, so on, so on. So the cycle is now energized and powerful in wholeness, integration, living from your power. And it is, so that's your resilience, your health, your well-being at a very optimal level. But Salia, what you said, environment is key. You cannot stand in a fire and not get burnt. You cannot, I can't find the word, you cannot stand in a pile of poo and not get it on you. And as someone else once said, I saw, they said, if you're standing in the, mm, the smell becomes normal and you don't realize you're in it anymore. So like you said, Sleha, you've got to do things in your external world, your relationships, your environments that then affect everything else about you. So yes, multidimensional. So what I'm talking to you here, if you can even see the scribble anymore, is the body, the physical body does affect the mental experience. Because when you don't feel good, you don't act good. You take bad actions. You don't do the things you should do, could do, should isn't the right word, would love to do that would put you into your highest state and then you get bad results and then that affects your thinking again and then you go around and around and around so it's all help connecting to each other that's what i teach except when i teach it it's not a messy scribble it's a very nice diagram on a powerpoint slide with nice pictures and stuff <laughs> but uh, that's my resilience and well-being model um okay questions questions uh thank you Celia, for bringing it up because that's really really important um Amesh says, do you think lockdown has caused more issues? Yes. I said it as soon as it's happened. I said, uh, is it right or wrong? I don't know. But I do know from my area of expertise that we're going to have a lot of mental health issues and physical health issues. I said it straight up. Because environment. What does a human need to be healthy and well? We need social interaction. We need freedom. We need health, wellness. We need lots of things. But what we had was separation, fear, rah, 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 problems, worries, not being able to see our loved ones, more stress. Rah, rah, rah. Look, I'm not saying if it was right or wrong, whatever, we did what we did. We had to do what we do. We, I don't know, man. It was crazy. But has it caused more issues? Absolutely. And people now, two years later, I was saying it two years ago, they're now saying, oh, I think we've got a mental health pandemic now because of the, all the lockdown. Yeah, go figure. We need to know this so that next time we have these very real challenges, we can be a little bit more wise in terms of how we deal with them. I don't know what's right or wrong. I just know that this is the truth. We are not one thing. We are not just a body, so protect the body. No, and here's the other thing, Amesh. Stress turns off your immune system. What do you need to fight illness and viruses? Immune system health. 
working, functioning. So when everybody's in fear and stress, everybody's immune system is off, you're more likely to get sick, my darlings. So you gotta learn when the world is giving you that, you gotta take control of yourself. That's what I did. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going to choose how I see this. I'm going to make sure I take care of myself. And it's easier for me than it is for others because I didn't have all the problems that other people suffered. So I get that. I'm okay being on my own. I sit here and talk to myself for a day and I'll be happy. I'm like, <laughs> I love it. I love my own company. And I have people around me in my home. So, But other people didn't. Other people really struggled. Other people lost businesses. I was lucky. I didn't lose my job. So, you know, it's, it's complex. But... Um, I thought black tea does have caffeine. Yes, tea does have caffeine. Um, I think maybe just because I'm used to it, um, I don't get the craziness that I do with coffee. For some reason, coffee affects me differently. I don't know. Uh, well said, said Saliha. Thank you, darling. Saliha says, I do. I don't know what you do, but I good, good. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, insightful says Amesh. Amesh, your name is now here and your face. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, so Leah says, actually, COVID-19 lockdown has probably saved my life as I was able to work from home and spend more quality time with my kids. So there you go. There's no one size fits all with this. You've got to know what's going on for you and how did you experience it? A lot of people have had positives because of exactly that. But other people really struggle. So I don't know. Can you do one size fits all? No because we're all different. And that's why it always comes back to you are your own guru. You must know who am I? And what do I need for my health, and well being mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, everything. Because like I said, like Celia said, I was okay at home chilling, I didn't need to be out with people socializing, having I'm chilling on my own, so it didn't affect me. But for other people it did. Some people want to be in the office. Some people, that was their social life. For other people, I loved being at home, as Celia said. It was better for me. I got to do the things that make me happy and healthy and well. So look, that's, I mean, that's a hugely complex thing, you know. We could talk for weeks about that and I still couldn't necessarily be any the wiser because it's very complex. It's very complex and humans are very complex. Um, but, but what is important is not necessarily for us to understand the whole everyone and the human and all, what, how everyone deals with everything. Just know you. Because what other people do is not necessarily something you can affect or need to. Just know you. When I get distressed, when life gives me a challenge, also a challenge, but me a challenge, how do I deal with it? And as you go through the change, mm, this is serving me, this is helping me, I'm actually enjoying this new thing of working from home. Oh, actually, maybe I'm not. I, I prefer to be around people. I don't know. But that's your journey to learn about yourself and to navigate. Mm, yes, this does work. Oh, I like that. I'll take someone out. I don't want that. That's the journey of growth and learning that we're all going through. So 11.34 is the time. I'm four minutes over and I gotta shoot because I've gotta go out. Um, but I think I covered all my main points and so many others because you all brought amazing questions. And I love this dialogue because those of you who know me know that I could just talk for hours by myself on here, but but that's not as fun. And, and they'd be pretty boring for other people. I love the questions. I love them. This is what makes it come alive for me. So thank you for all your amazing, amazing questions and comments. I love it. Thank you for being here with me on, on whatever platforms you're on. Um, but uh, yeah, mental health is physical health. Physical health is mental health. One system, that was the key of this session today. It's all one system affecting each other. So make sure you get aware of that and learn to navigate what's going on for you at any given time. Use your own wisdom. Um, mind and body are one. You are multidimensional being and uh, LinkedIn, you're back to LinkedIn user. I'm not sure unless there's another LinkedIn user, but um, thank you. You're very welcome. And I wish you all a wonderful afternoon. Take good care of yourselves. I'll see you next week. Next week, I'm gonna be back in the UK. I'm going to pretend that I'm okay with that. I've been in Mallorca for seven weeks and I'm coming back in a week and I'm going to be back. So I'll be doing this from there. 
Um, but it's all good. I'll deal with that when it comes. Um, Silly here says, thank you, Pinky. You are the best. You are the best, my darling. Insightful as always says, Imesh, you're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Now I'm going to shoot. So take good care. See you soon. Bye.